Welcome back everyone to episode 5 of the TNO uh, uh, mod campaign, which we're playing as a uh, state of Guangdong, but new accommodations. Yoshiko sat warily on the creek in mattress, surrounded by a faded wallpaper and the ever-present dampness, her perspiration indistinguishable from the humidity of the unventilated room. This is a new accommodation in a good Zhujin district with a single Spartan wooden table and a pale linoleum flooring next to a gas stove she barely knew how to use. On the days after her father's body had been consigned to a local Japanese temple, Yoshiko threw herself into calling publishers, magazines, newspapers, gossip rags, where they didn't really matter. She was sure that she stopped, her money would surely run out before her grief. It had gone nowhere, though. The Zhujin copywriters had no need for a Japanese woman, and the Japanese editors waved her off for fresh male graduates from Tokyo. At wit's end, she bucked protocol and stormed into the office of the last name on her list, the Canton Fujin Koron, a woman's magazine offering fresh perspectives for the Japanese readers. The receptionist was none too pleased that Yoshiko had no appointment, and Yoshiko, in desperation, had dug in her heels, literally. A security come to drag her away as she played her last card on the daughter of Baron Yasukawa, Yasukawa and demanded to see the editor. Silence. The receptionist looked at her like she'd given two, grown two heads, while the heads in the editing floor turned dis disbelievingly towards the commotion. She had felt her cheeks flushed from the attention, the embarrassment, and the realization that no one really cared. The beat of approaching footsteps took her out of her mental haze, along with a proffered hand and insincere words. Miss Yasukawa, I'm very sorry for your loss. Your name and story would be of great uh, uh, interest to, reader, to our readership. She swallowed her pride and accepted everything that came after. Hitachi enters the Legislative Council. And now, before I bid my farewell to this honorable institution, let us once again offer... All offer our sincerest welcome to the compatriots from Hitachi Limited of Manchuria, joining us in our collective endeavors for the Pan-Asian cause. For who wouldn't? The neat 45 degree, uh, b degree bow, the all too brilliant smile, the sheer courteousness emanating from the orchid emblem line jet black suit that would leave even the most seasoned of Matsushita's cronies and all, to give him the slightest sense at Komai Kenichiro, and you could tell the man from his Sing King meant business, and the best kind too, yet underneath all the applause and sincerest welcomes, among the sea of Guangdong's elites lurk the usual fear, the usual skepticism, bundled with an upspoken consensus. The stone faced Manchurians don't belong here, not yet. For Komai, though. It mattered little. The season adjourned, so came his time to make his acquaintances with the great tycoons of Guangdong, and, as perfectly expected, they were the ones who submit to unease, not him, to submit to unease. Matsushita uh, Masa, Masaharu's nods were brief, curt, and as if, some, if it could somehow conceal the trembles in his handshake, Morita Akeo didn't even bother ironing out the disdained apprehension, tinging his cheery greetings. And Li Kaxing, the local is it, couldn't even finish a sentence without stuttering or reaching for his drenched forehead. What great men to work with. And then, then there's Ibuka Masaru, self-proclaimed visionary, striding for the crap-eating grim plaster on his face. Welcome to the Legislative Council! His shrill, booming voice froze into a whisper, as his mouth gray as Komai's ear. You know why you're here for. You know what you're here for. I didn't let you in to do anything funny. To this, Komai had a stifled chuckle. That's a sure gentleman, he raised his voice. As he ran again and again in uh, Mongyo's cramped conference halls, uh, this time all Guangdong shall make his audience his subjects. We have a mandate to fulfill after all, don't we? As we continue on without a focus for now. Which is kind of sadness, but you know, whatever. And Delvelmo cycles is going to take some time. As we start trying to cut down on corruption, unfortunately. Doing your job. It had barely been a day since Lam Hyun Seon retreated from his brief respite back home. Here he was again, wrapping up yet another extended shift within Koshu's concrete jungles, mind still lingering on the tense up visages of Ma, Uncle, and everyone else, but it only took mere minutes before a fellow constable's winded pants jarred him from his lethargy. Lam, people are arguing in the market, and I can't speak any Japanese. As he jogged into the teeming market, Lam could see a disheveled shopkeeper shouting animatedly in pigeon Japanese, his smudged apron contrasting with the modern dress worn by the Japanese woman. A few fellow officers nodded as Lam approached, pushing away the crowd in front of the bing suit. A bring suit. Break it up, Lam yelled in Japanese. The woman turned towards him while the shopkeeper threw up his hands and walked into the darkened shop. I'm sorry, Officer Hayashi. The woman peered at Lam's badge before offering her card. Yasukawa, Yasukawa Yoshiko for the Kantan Fujin Koron. I was just doing my job asking questions, but all of a sudden he started yelling. Lam looked at the Bing Sut, filled with people and empty tables, a wave of irritation surged forth. Did you ever think you were stopping him from doing his job? Answering your questions isn't going to make his customers happy or put money in his pocket. Do you know any Cantonese? Yoshiko shook her head, and Lam struggled to not roll his eyes. I'm not surprised, you might want to start there. Diu le lo mo japun zai. Lam froze as he turned to see the shopkeeper storm back outside, bending his fury while Lam's colleagues looked on aghast. Yoshiko turned to Lam, and what does that mean? Don't worry about it. Uh, move along now. Minding your language. <clears throat> and it's almost March, everybody. Almost March, as we have a yearly deficit. Of course, the GDP growth is not great. Uh, debt's getting up there, and inflation as well. We could be doing better, of course. 
But welcome to the state of Guangdong once again. After the the crisis, as our economy is slowly trying to get up there, and inflation is going down, which is nice. Uh, growth is getting better. Deficits don't look great, but you know, whatever. Mine in your language. A few days after Yoshiko's disastrous interview with the market, she was calling to me with her editor at the start of the working day. Feeling trepidation run along, running along her spine, she strained her blouse and walked up, or walked under the fluorescent lights, making her way towards the back office. Sit down, Takashi Koichi motioned to the chair opposite the desk as Yoshiko entered. His gray jacket tailored to his stocky frame, soft and somewhat by middle age, how went the interviews? I'm sorry, Yoshiko asked, rubbing her neck. I haven't much success. People don't want to talk to me. I can't speak Cantonese. I understand. Takasaki's words were reassuring, but Yoshiko saw his eyes narrow behind the square spectacles. The locals aren't easy to approach, even dangerous if you don't speak the language, and doubly, doubly so, given we're Japanese. But can't I be uh, being helpless forever? Yoshiko felt her face flush in embarrassment, of course. Luckily for you, Taka, uh, Takasaki said, I have a friend in Guangdong police, and he's agreed to loan us an officer to serve as your uh, minder when needed. We should get used to dealing in favors, y Yasukawa. It'll do. Excuse me, two knocks at the door heralded the arrival of the police uh, minder. And Long Hyun Soon stopped dead as Yoshiko turned in his direction. Hello again, Yoshiko said, a voice squeaking. Officer Hayashi, or Hayashi, you two know each other? Let the games begin. Oh crap! So the March second, 1964, Matsuzawa Takuji was gone, likely hurried into yesterday's midnight flight to Tokyo, taking whatever Yasuda Mark placards left, scattering on the Legco complex floor with him. But no matter, he wouldn't be missed. For those honorable members of the Legislative Council, the ones staying at the apex of Guangdong, people have far greater matters to attend to. The gavel struck. One by one, each of the hundred gentlemen rose to their feet, waiting to the podium, and cast their sacred vote in the gray metal ballot sitting atop, unassuming yet glaring down upon the sea of bobbing heads below in silent pride. Each little slip of paper was a handshake made, or a fat stack of 100 yen notes well received, perhaps each vote a thrust of fate, a tip of the scale towards directions unknown. Upon the spectacle, Morita Akeo watched, clenching his interlocked hands tighter and tighter. Li Kaoxing, his companion, breathed into his sweating palms. Matsushita Masaharu kept his eyes to the front, hands on his knees as still as a statue. Ibuka Masaru's eyeballs darted from one corner to the hall over the other. And to all this, Komai Kenichiro, the Manchurian outsider, graciously or gratuitously, offered his amused smiles. A veil of silence and anxiety draped over the hall, and the stream of suits and ties flowed on and on, only more and more grating did the ultimate question grow. Who among the three candidates shall claim the helm? Which among the three possibilities, the three paths towards the future, shall the state of Guangdong, this jewel of the south, embark for on for decades to come? No matter the results, no matter what comes after, the stage has been set today. Guangdong returns to the embrace of its tycoon. Today, the dance macabre clamors to its crescendo, and now this council declares Guangdong's next ex chief executive to be... Some final dealings can, must be sorted out before the final victory can be determined. A contender who holds the most seats in the Legislative Council should be given an additional edge for the race of succession, which shall be added to the final tally. In the event of a tie, the next chief executive will be selected purely based on who holds plurality in the Legislative Council. With that out of the way, the future Guangdong shall be decided right here, or right now. Oh boy. So we have 31. Um... Is there anything else we do? I don't think so. Look at this guy. Chong Kong, President Li Kaxing. Nice. Has a lot of non Leco members, huh? He looks kinda happy. Well, that smile's hiding a lot of stuff. So, do we have anything else here? High decisions? Uh, not too much, no. With great power, Morita uh, Akio. The instant the unmistakable name of Guangdong's next chief executive blared across the hall, Morita finally found himself overwhelmed. Shock, gratification, a tinge of fear, a bizarre torrent of emotions flooded his mind, and he could no longer tell them apart. He rose dumbfoundedly from his spot. Amidst the uh, jubilant cheers of Sony's band, he found himself tearing across the row of seats, shuffling through the weary gla glares from the other corners of the complex, and the clouds of doubt and desolation, having haunted him for the whole past decade, wormed their way into his brain once again. But he stood there in the aisle and saw the path extending beneath his feet, and the clouds were no more. He recomposed himself and began his advance towards the podium. This was it. This is what both he and Ka Xing had craved for almost an eternity now. The toppling of the status quo, the promised stairway for the disenfranchised, and the long overdue opportunity to deliver a semblance of habituality. Or habita habitability. Guangdong deserved so much, and now he had it all in his hands. After twelve long, agonizing years of swimming in re irrelevance, Shambles turned into confident strides, and a smile blossomed across his face as he marched past seething Ibuka Masaru. The weasel will not snatch another victory away from Sony ever again, he'll see to it. As he stepped before the 99 corporate suits and met their expedient gazes, Akio grabbed hold of the microphone and saw a reassuring nod from his loyal, trusting friend at last. 
Uh, the Maverick shall make his voice heard. I offer my deepest gratitude to everyone here with me. We salute Chief Executive Morita Akio. Following tense rounds of negotiations, the Guangdong Legislative Council has voted to confirm Morita Akio of the Sony Corporation to the post of Chief Executive. An ardent advocate of reform, Morita has vowed to create a more equitable society for all Guangdong's peoples. Morita's support among the Zhuzhim Cantonese Japanese class is particularly noteworthy, as this is close friendship and collaboration with Li Kaxing of Chiang Kong Enterprises, Guangdong's largest Chinese-owned corporation. While Morita's reforms make well instability among the native population, it has also drawn significant opposition from the state's more hardline corporate faction, in particular from Fujitsu's CEO and Morita's former business partner, Ibuka Masaru. Three pearls, three people, lots of problems. Oh, this guy is gonna add some the gadgeteer of Guangdong, more stability, more GDP growth. Inflation rate goes up though, unfortunately, but it's still helped uh, hammered down by uh, growth and audio and video research factor. Not gonna lie, he's kind of handsome. If you want to get him, please go ahead. I'm not gay, but he's kind of handsome, not gonna lie, with that hair. So, do we get a focus? Probably another event. There's, a, there's been a, how many events so far? I don't know. There's just so many events. It is TNO, but still. 5%? Eh, that's not bad. 4%? Eh. Oh, Hayes Bucks. <clears throat> Lee Hay's mind never rested. His brain was churning volcano of new ideas and designs, where other young men dreamed of pretty girls with gentle smiles and colorful clothes. Those sound really nice. Hay dreamed of blueprints with sharp lines and electrical notation. When he awoke from such dreams, he would tumble out of bed, seize pencil and paper, and try to capture the fleeting images of in, in his mind's eye. Whether he always had it within him, or whether the days of living within Koshu's seams had simply hammered it into his head, he had no idea. His inspiration was fed by his many hundreds of after-school visits to manufacturing firms and the insight from the technical journals he devoured, he learned and wrote. And what he wrote went into an empty toolbox he carried with him everywhere. And his gut he knew that the contents, contents of his brain box were novel and had the potential to change the world, Hay acted upon as his instinct. He made time to visit the top firms in Guangdong and offer some of his ideas to them. He knew how predatory the companies could be and had no illusions about the fact that some of his ideas might be stolen and that was okay. Hay was very careful to uh, present only the ideas he could live without. They were currency, a means of getting him inside some doors that would otherwise remain closed. The very best inspiration came from observing how big the companies operated. And then what Hay gained from these visits was made so much sweeter by the knowledge of the companies that thought they were coming out on top in the deal. A mind like, uh, like a raging fire. A status of Guangdong revolves to the Silicon Years. Our approach to policing will evolve into pervasive Ken Pate networks. Changes national focus treat of Morita and the Silicon Years. All sort of laws passed from the Yasuda caretaking government has expired. The revised labor standard ordinance has been implemented due to the decision to do, delay it. Finally, finally, finally. Oh my god. Chief Executive Morita. After over a decade as the perennial underdog in Guangdong's corporate politics, Morita Akeo now reigns as Chief Executive, alongside his second in command and long-term ally Li Kaxing, the richest Zhujin man in Guangdong. <clears throat> Excuse me, for years. Uh, the two have built an empire in the shadow of the Japanese Saibatsu, fighting as hard as they dared for the survival of Sony and Chong Kong and for the livelihoods of the Chinese and Zhujin working for them. The scars of the Yasuda crisis are plain to see from Sony's headquarters in Hong Kong, the jobless, the poor, the hungry rule the streets of Guangdong, and bound together by a creeping helplessness. But Morita and Li believe in that in every crisis lies an opportunity both for the business and for the people. We salute our new chief executive, Morita Akeo, and his partner in, crime, uh, partner in arms, Li Kaxing. Awesome. Lee's ambition. Murita's dream. Lee would have expected an unassuming factory owner with nothing more than an elementary education to have climbed out of poverty and become the leader of Chiang Kong, the only local conglomerate with a scale to join the five companies with interest in property, retail, distribution, and light manufacturing. To be rich is not enough. Lee would not stop until he's the richest man in Guangdong, capable of ensuing that the people of Guangdong do not suffer the same poverty he once did, preferably by eating out of his hand. Brotherly competition. The chief executive sat in the new office, looking over piles of reports, messages, and uh, <clears throat> paperwork. Sitting through the various stacks, their gaze came to rest upon a series of documents detailing Guangdong's elder brother in the sphere, Manchukuo. The report detailed Manchukuo's path through the chaos of the Suda crisis, with disparate factions within the state banding together under the figurehead of Asian Gyoro Puyi. Even now, they claim to be the sphere's greatest success, the light that shone the brightest. Such words only filled the chief executive with fire. Uh, <clears throat> Suzuki had made many mistakes during his tenure, but when it came to Guangdong's relationship with the Manchukuo, he'd been on the right track. Manchukuo might not be an expl explicit enemy of Guangdong, we are a rival, but their ways are old, out of touch, and soon to be left in the end of all of history. Guangdong stood for a new approach, it innovated and disrupted an, an economic status quo that was becoming ever too comfortable. If Guangdong could finally best Manchukuo economically, it would only serve to vindicate the chief executive and all the great minds like him in Guangdong. A new economic age beckons. After the setback of the Soviet crisis, the race to reach a higher GDP than the Empire of Manchur Manchuria is in full swing. We can't do anything here just too much yet, so which is fine, whatever. We have 46 political power, which is nice. 
Um, who 20%. Now, corruption is between 20 and 40%. You get more daily political power and growth. We're barely above, so it's probably worth spending this here. Decrease corruption by 4.5%. Decrease the Japanese expat government support as well as across the board. Let's do that. It costs us so much political power, but it's, honestly, I've not seen anything below 20% yet, so. Look at the silicon years. <clears throat> oh, that hurts us pretty badly, but it's, it's better than it was before. Um, culture corruption, the finest money can buy. It's gotten better, of course, like we said. Pervasive Kento Pi networks. Uh, and caution itself. <coughs> oh, this land is my oyster. It's been barely a week and Morita's already pressed these stinky fingerprints all over my government complex. I mean, 10 new Chung Kong names a day on the first floor? Mumbled Ibuka with a mouthful of bok choy, as if there weren't someone else's opinion they forgot to ask before turning the whole darn place upside down. And if by someone else you mean the two of us, I agree. Matsushita chuckled as he downed another plastic cup of jasmine tea. Three of us. Of course, if we're counting Mr. Komai. As the was cordial, the lucky flash Komai. Seated to his left on the round table, anything but. That would make three of us versus Morita and Lee's two. They might be one company short, yes, but no less dangerous. Yeah, yeah, they're bad news. I saw it coming, you saw it coming. What else is new? Ibuka shrugged. As he leaned back on his chair, all that's left to do is for Komai to work as Kenpai Tai Magic or whatever and do whatever he does best. And Komai, are you listening? Hello? And there's Komai Kenichiro sat oblivious to the clank of plates and spoons all around him, eyes frozen on the chopsticks in his right hand. And caught between the two wooden halves is a roll of flour wrapped around a serving of mincemeat. And as his fingers squeezed and squeezed, chunks of mince foamed and oozed out from the seams as it did the dark red soy sauce down onto the tablecloth below. <coughs> For all the time I spent in Manchuria, he muttered, I never got to visit a meat factory and learn how they make pigs into pork. A shame, really. Uh, for us, we're probably going to go with air parody. <clears throat> He raised his head, meeting Ibuka and Matsushita's buffalo glares. I appreciate our breakfast together, uh, gentlemen. How far go? Siu Mai, Mao Liao Ko, Chong Fan, as he raised his chopstick with a roll of flour. You wouldn't find these names on a Japanese hotel menu. It really is a treat to try things out for the first time again. And we shall have plenty of firsts in our lives, wouldn't you say? Uh, Morita's dream. Driven from Japan in 1952, Morita Akeo was seen much since he washed ashore in Guangdong. Penniless and abandoned, years of back-breaking effort have learned more local respect than he ever found in Japan as the man who fought the Zaibatsu in spite of their overwhelming material advantages. Now he holds the future Guangdong in his hands, Morita knows he has no time to waste to ensure that Sony can turn its monument a moment and the spotlight to the everlasting glory, to reward the many backers of Guangdong's homegrown champion by taking it from one of many to the one and only, through the dreams of possibilities. Streamers, confetti, and empty bottles. <clears throat> Or strewn across the repurposed conference hall in Sony's Hong Kong headquarters, a stone's throw from the murky waters of Port Shorey. The rivalry started as soon as Morita and Lee's motorcade arrived at dusk, as Sony engineers and Chong Kong managers streaming from the building to welcome their tower of triumphant generals. Morita's foot bumped into an errant beer bottle rolling on a tin on the floor. The amount of alcohol and food prepared at the short notice was astounding, he thought. But not any more so than his election as chief executive only hours before. Did you pull this all together, Kashin? Morita asked. As he gingerly made his way to the table of honor, now abandoned except for Lee, do I need to pay for it? It's on the house, Lee chortled, a faint flush on his face as he offered Marita one last cup of brandy. Join me. Marita nodded before grimacing at the sound of his shoe ripping itself free from the soil carpet. And the cleaning? Worry about that tomorrow. Lee waved off Marita off dramatically, raising his glass. Now we tell us the future. I'm serious, Marita replied. I don't think we'd ever make it this far, Kshin. Matsushita is in this, in this for himself, and Ibuka and Komai are joining, going to jump on any mistake we make, and we have to worry about the details and what's about, what, about what's possible. The future or dream is finally within reach, Akeo, Leo admonished, a sudden clarity to his voice. How can you worry about what is possible when we haven't tried anything yet? Tomorrow, delicate dance begins, and we're going to dance a lot. You, me, we're just going to dance. I want to make money. Hey, here we go. Decrease his police presence, uh, which is not great. I really don't want the Yakuza here, though. And we're going to need that political power later, and honestly, we are definitely going to need it later. Didn't have all that much, but, you know, whatever. Zushin support is 45%, which is not great. Of course, we just lowered it more. It's not that much to hear either. We have a crap ton of support here, though. Can't buy tie. I don't really want to lower police support too much more, but... Yeah, I guess we'll see in a little bit, huh? 84%. Oh, wow. Actually, it didn't go... How high can it go? <coughs> Excuse me. Independence from the Algerian Republic, huh? 71%, that's pretty good, actually. 10 days left for that one, that's not bad, too. Decrease Japanese expert support. You know what, we can do this, too. Alright, why not? Expat support, it goes up high enough, anyways. Um, I definitely don't want to do this one, though. Mentoring connection. 
Uh, but getting a thing this might be Yakuza joint, said Lieutenant Ito, rummaging through some boxes. I swear in one of those things I'm going to find where they keep all those spare pinkies. What? Asked Kawasaki. What can you say from the mass of shipping invoices? I said this place stinks of our friends in the shippers organization, Surgeon, said Ito. Sure looks like it, said Kawasaki, especially since their dashing hats have been heeding the call of the King of the North. King of the North, asked Ito. Speaking Japanese, man, what the? Wait, what, you mean China or Manchukuo? They got a king of sorts. Kawasaki stood up and presented Ito with a pile of invoices and torn off labels, all bearing the same address and stamp. Norahachi Export and Logistics Concern. It's, it's king based, supposedly, but I've never heard of them. Sweep team's already been through, but I'm told the crates reek of opium. So, front company in the north dealing with the front in the south. What are you getting at, Kawasaki? Machuku has a legal monopoly on most of its major agricultural sectors, soybeans, millet, sorghum, and opium, but none of these, legal or otherwise, have the government stamp on them. Sure, you can talk about bootleggers or smugglers, but they wouldn't be able to supply nearly as much as this place receives and at jacked up prices, too. Kawasaki's brought for road. I think we have some, make, some calls to make. More than just survival. The new Guangdong would simply not be a playground for the corporations to do as they will while leaving broken bodies and discarded dreams in their wake. For Marita and Lee, even as they receive their official mandate from Tokyo to suppress, so Manchukuo and uh, usurp their position in the Copra Spirit Sphere, they dream of something else. To make life in Guangdong more about than just survival, and to get rich while doing so. They'll do everything to see that the people of Guangdong come to see as they do, their home, the first by necessity, then by choice. More growth, the reflections are reflecting on emptiness. Wait here. <clears throat> The driver of the company car out of the engine as Lee Kaohsiung exited, while uh, walking briskly over the gates of the estate, a two-story, full-size house in the hills overlooking the South China Sea, nestled away from the bustle of the urban Hong Kong, away from the Japanese enclaves on the peak. The Japanese magnates and socialists might scoff at his ambition in calling the property an estate, by the standards of the palatial mansions and private uh, <clears throat> forests. Lee's house barely counted as civilized, yet it was still heads and shoulders above the tenements that housed the majority of the population, Chinese or Zhujin alike. Lee went inside. Late in the evening sunlight, illuminated the entrance hall, large enough for his family and more, a few more besides to stand comfortably on cypress flooring. He could hear the cries of his infant son from upstairs and the soft shuffling of a caretaker's feet moving to tend to the boy. Faint through the walls and doors, but not so quiet as to be distant. It was space and comfort enough to live well, but without being empty. Emptiness. As he rummaged, <clears throat> rummaged in the kitchen for some extra fruit, his wife, Yu Ying, handed him a basket. He thought that emptiness was not a function of space. He remembered a boy 13, his scratched knees bent beside a threadbare, worn blanket, bloody by his terminal cough. In the town of Hubble, he and his father called home. He had promised the whole of our family would have a good life, and then he had been alone. Lee hurried back to the gate, adding the overflowing basket to a surprise driver for your family, he said. The driver shook his head, but Lee insisted. We have to look out for each other, and I will have more. 17%, so... Increase it by less than 1%, which is good. So between 0 and 20%, you get plus 0.15 political power, more monthly Chinese government support, which is what we want, and even more real GDP growth. That is not bad. End of military rule. Oh. Are you still killing each other? No, you're not. Okay. Wow, you actually peaced out. Losers. Disappointing. Here's more political power, which is actually really nice. Growth multiplier, Daipon Taikoku's opinion cap. Nice. <clears throat> and then, capitalism with a human face, for people to begin developing a sense of loyalty to Guangdong beyond the paycheck. Oh, it does the first step to not working into early graves. We should support in the state. Okay, or we can go here. Corruption, police weakness, crime and vice all must be addressed head on so that Guangdong may wake up to a more secure future. Here's the control city approaching. Our approach to policing will evolve into transitional security apparatus. Instead of browbeating the underworld in submission, we may be able to use a triad to our advantage. And Stanley Hose a plan by which we might just do that. By integrating the triads into our security strategy, we'll no longer gain corruption from triad control states on the region of Guangdong's interface. Ooh! That's not bad. Attempt to exercise corruption from Guangdong as best we can. What's over here? Maintaining our solvency. Our vision program to turn Guangdong into something more than a glorified factory for it may not come cheap. The government's finances must be made bulletproof. Introduce financial solvency and liquidity ordinance to the Legislative Council. We don't have a lot of support from this. We have 40 seats. Our debts with the Zhujin. Contract our sale. That's probably the way we want to go. Our dues with the Japanese. Give the Japanese investors a bone. Sell to the Japanese. Increases the focus on the Japanese expats. Open the actions. Probably not. 
Uh, the Guangdong Spear, the future of the Guangdong shall be defined by how we build our economy and the place of our Zhujian business and Chinese workers will give him with him. 30 days of stability? Li Kaxing's vision of the future of our economy. Industrial organization ordinance the legislative council. 43 seats that had amendment of stability first to the active ordinance granting the following effects. More growth of excellency, but this one gives them more growth. Um, as much as I want, and I want more growth, don't get me wrong, but getting rid of corruption would be really nice. Why not working with them would be nice? No longer gain corruption from the triads, because the triads, they don't give us that much corruption, so let's go over here first. Let's try this one. Guangdong Spear. From the ashes of Yasuda, the new Guangdong must rise. With the old Guangdong focuses on profitability at the expense of long term stability, Chief Executive Morita now faces the question of how to refine Guangdong's economic model for his term in office. If we want to be as transformational as the leaders we aspire to be, then the decision will, be momentous, will have momentous consequences. Mirages. The blinding, blinding sun bore down on the man hunched on the bare concrete, a rumpled shirt hanging untucked from tattered trousers of his body strung with yellow, shallow breath. Nobody paid him much notice, or if they did, they gave him a man in wide berth. <clears throat> Marita wondered if it had been a set of draft by Yasuda's collapse. He fought down the urge to offer some yen he could, but the man was one of thousands. He couldn't save everyone, no matter how hard he tried, and he was trying. He made it to the chief executive, hadn't he? As he turned to leave, of course. <clears throat> trying to disappear into the crowds, but to no avail. Where he tried to squeeze into a gap, he would be nudged, bombed, jostled back into the impromptu spotlight. Would the world not let him go without facing the hunched man? Marita's throat inched with a sudden thirst as he approached a pitiful wretch. Faintly heard the scratchy noise of a familiar melody coming from the man's hand, from a TR-56, the first transistor radio Sony had <clears throat> ever sold. But it was incomplete, it was on, in closer inspection, the first prototype. All screws loose and exposed wiring stolen from Tokyo's telecommunications in the last position to its name, Morita jolted upright, suppressing a yell bursting from his throat. An artificial breeze swept over him as his eyes adjusted to the darkness in his bedroom, <clears throat> furnished with antique rosewood and overlooking the lights of Port Shorty. His breathing is shallow and rapid, slow as he returned to reality. Marita drained the glass of water on the table in an instant, hands trembling, waking. Clarity told him that he wouldn't get more sleep that night, not that he'd ever want to see that particular memory again. Just more night terrors. Delivering on promises. Residents of Guangdong, I promise you a better future. Prosperity and profit are a boon to be shared. As our managers and our workers share in risk, so too should they share in reward. Words are cheap, Lee Chun muttered. Even as the chief executive's address could barely be heard about the clattering of plates in the kitchen. Had the family been promised so much, her home raised its time off, only to have their hopes dashed with his mother, May. Shook her head as she scrubbed the last dish with a fraying towel, but hey and way, or why? Or glued to the aging radio, transfixed by the honeyed words, too innocent to know it was easier to hear not to hope. Lam Hyun Soon took a long drag of a cigarette in the police station's break room, scarcely listening to the radio broadcast. The experiences of the past few months, the desperation, the lawlessness, the exhaustion, were too deeply engraved into his mind to be papered over by a few nice words and promises. He stubbed out the cigarette as he donned his cap, heading out of the next patrol. He believed them when, and if he saw them. Yoshiko rubbed her temples, her head throbbing from the strain of trying to follow a Cantonese translation that had followed the speech. She learned enough to understand that the sh what the shopkeeper had said the other day, to her own embarrassment, but she didn't know enough to say anything in response. She had to learn faster, she thought, so she could actually speak to ask people if Morita was delivering on the promises. Lee was waiting in the chief executive's office upon Morita's return, handing him a sheaf of papers awaiting their attention. Morita accepted them without a word, and the two settled into the first of many long nights at the office. Actions speak louder than words in ringing up the next door. The line at the other end of the, uh, took about 30 seconds to pick up, but eventually it was, and a man's voice could be heard. Communications Division, Captain Toyo Toyomi speaking. Who is this? Guangdong Police Force, Detective Sergeant Kawasaki Minori. We're calling about a problem that we think the Kenpai Tai could help us with. Kawa Kawasaki wasn't sure, but he thought he could hear a suppressed chuckle. Certainly we're always willing to lend a hand to our civilian counterparts. By all means, so your problem will take all the time you need. We'll still be there when you're done. Well, we recently cleared out a major opium dealer just off Port Shorty, a Yakuza affiliated. Excellent work, Sergeant. I see some of my colleagues' views on the politics are at least exaggerated. The streets will certainly be safer with such a constant vigilance. With all due respect, sir, I haven't finished. Going through the records, we have reason to believe that they are the beneficiaries of an outside supplier. I think International Ring is involved in the mass transit of narcotics down south. And your people conduct wider operations than are ours. Do you know? A moment's silence. We're not currently aware of any opium smuggling routes from Manchukuo on this mass scale. It's more likely that your den was receiving a supply from the Yakuza working with Southeast Asian criminal organizations and using false labels to obscure the trail. The whole region's bandits country now, after all. I see you. I see. Thank you, sir. Said Kawasaki. I hung up behind it for a moment. Not north, but south? Hmm. I never said anything, I never said anything about Manchukuo. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well. Yeah. I kind of want to see about that one. That seems like more interesting. That seems very interesting. So we do have excellence. Um, we need more seats. Is, is there any way to get political power? Let's see. 
We have some comments to go through as well. Political. So it is on the left one. Of stability, of course. Uh, adapt Li Cushing's vision of the future of the economy. Um, let's, oh, let's, let's, stop first. Uh, let's see. Stability first strengthens political position, the cost of potential GDP growth. We get more growth, which is nice. So we don't get any more political power, which sucks. Maintaining, uh, maintaining our solvency, which would probably be important to do as well. Capitalism with a human face. Uh, two most pressing concerns we can take to action to address today. Get more government support, the meaning of work. And the health crisis. Poverty slowly begin to improve. That's pretty good. Buying dignity. Safety first. The bodies we see. 48 support, it's not bad. The air we breathe. <coughs> Excuse me. Probably increase China's support as much as possible. We can't pass it one too. Reach out and listen. The value of life. And so what do we have over here? We have reform security like we saw earlier. Here's police uh, control. Rooting out corruption. Which is already pretty low as well. I do like the triads one. That seems very cool. Adjust incentives. Increase admin costs a little bit more. Into the ranks. This is all about corruption. Not too much else, which I do like. But I, do, I wish we had more political power stuff. This is corruption. I think we probably want to do all the other stuff first before we deal with corruption too much. We can the yokoi and his yakuza friends before we call him in. And professionalize the police. Um, let's try this one, because I do want to see if we can do it night with Stanley Ho. Instead of Brawl being the underworld in the mission, maybe to use the triads as an advantage. Stanley Ho has a plan by which we might just do that. By integrating the triads into a part of our security strategy, we no longer gain corruption from triad controlled states on the region's Guangdong interface. Uh, reform security. And so goes an old joke running around the pubs in Central. A man who worked with 10 yen must pay the three teeth before he comes back home. Three to the Shirokiya Hotel, three to Kenpai Tai, and three to the Commission of the Police. By dining time, all our poor hero has left for his house and his lady's half a yen. What about the other half, one with that mask? Why, the other would reply, to the lady mistress and one chai, of course. Then why are there three tai teeth and not four? Because half a yen is no teeth and one chai, it's a dowry. Everyone laughs because it's true, but that doesn't mean it should remain so. Corruption and police weakness, crime and vice, all must be addressed head-on so the Guangdong can make, wake up to a more secure future. Uh, get more police presence, which is nice. Ah, Alex is going to start at wins. Oh, good job. Anything here super important? Not super, super important. More army stuff, and that's nice. Uh, one of the comments from the last video is, because Sony is for Zhu Jin, you should try to increase the support and the police control. The yeah, LC. We'll definitely get there. And we, oh, we got 10 days left. I'll get more political power growth. Oh, growth, uh, GDP growth, I should say. GDP growth. Paraguay Bush War. Yeah, we'll work on the police here. I really don't want the Yakuza owning anything here at all. Um, 46% not great, 36% not great. The beginning of the 1964 product cycle. Ah, here we are once again. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So, uh, every day is a battle for the corporate warriors and emperor scientists of Guangdong. One day in particular that stands out amongst the rest in a singular importance. An army of managers spread forth from Koshu's boardrooms bearing budgets, memorandums, and orders to office spaces and factory floors across Guangdong, held in the start of the year's product cycle. Once again in 1964, the four companies of Guangdong raced to see who could mesmerize and win over the hearts and wallets of the world with advancements in technology or gadgetry and engineering. Um, whether through technical brilliance, unforgettable marketing, or ruthless cost management, one company will either take the world by storm or crash ignominiously into failure, of course. As uh, the company's failures go, so does Guangdong's economy. We support Sony. Hitachi has the answers. Increased liquid reserves by 0.35 billion. That's not bad. More corruption, though. Uh, offers a handy bribe in exchange for selling the product and forfeiting all the Leco bonuses. However, do not know what the tensions lie behind this offer. So, our initial product quality between 10% and 20%, and product interest between 0 and 32. So, corruption is actually really good right now, which is awesome. Ooh, so approval could be very high. So, right now, 14 is not great. 29, that's actually really good. 0 to 30, 32-ish percent, that's actually pretty gosh darn decent. 14% from 0 to 20, very good. So, we're working on the TA-1120 stereo amplifier, unmatched by vacuum tube models. First, all silicon transistor stereo amplifier. Average above, prof above average profitability. Um, let's take a look see. So, release decisions. Push it. Uh, we don't really do that. It makes it more profitable, so we can hide them. Um, oh, we can start to the Italian market. The Empire of Japan has always maintained happy relations with its former partner and ally Italy. It's high time we read the benefits of the long friendship. Lucky for us. We're perfectly situated to enter the unified niche of electronics. Well, Italy, may, Italy may no longer be as backward as it was in the 30s. It's not yet developed as a market for the mass produced consumer products we specialize in. Most of what it produces domestically is of relatively high quality, but they are expensive, scarce, and largely marketed towards corporations and the government. If all goes well, uh, expansion in Italy will come with an eager new pool of consumers and little direct competition for the time being. 
much more profit, product profitability. Iberia. That Baron Union represents the unfortunate fate of many states that were spared destruction by the Reich, only to be pulled low by the reverberations of its victory. The dysfunctional government established by Spain and Portugal's merger, not to mention the resulting loss of colonial revenue following the German land grabs in Africa, had brought Iberian economic potential during the 50s. Recent talk of reforms and revitalization may not uh, herald a future economic boom, but for now, they are an underdeveloped market waiting for us to tap. Until they establish a domestic electronics industry of their own, we can easily fill, fill the shelves with their products, provided we can get the blessing of the Caldillos. And Turkish market, that's different too. Not all the victors of the Second World War merged as lucky as Japan, Germany, or Italy. True, the Turks merged with territories in the Caucasus and a new hegemony in the Near East, but that ain't done much to solve their long ailing economy or cool popular discontent of their new patrimony. All this to say, Turkey has not had the luxury of developing an economy that can produce the latest electronics for government or civilian consumption alike. Luckily for them, our good relations with its Italy allows us to use the Suez and thus grant us easy access to the Turkish markets. Mexican markets! With North America being the center of the American OFN influence, breaking into its potentially lucrative markets has been predictably slow going, luckily for us. Not every nation there is so leashed to Uncle Sam's and refused to good business. Mexico has long been aware of, the, of its giants to its north, and while not without cause, with no real love for the American led international order the OFN seeks to establish. It's been the Mexican government's standing policy to seek neutrality in both military and economic affairs. If only more states could be so sensible in these matters, the world might be a much better place. Americans might give it the asada, but if the Ameri Mexican government has a need for better data storage or computational power and assistance to demand the comforts of the modern age, then that's what we'll get. For a price, of course, the Brazilian market. Brazil has a rise of power, both within South American and global affairs, and like their American neighbors, Brazil and Japan have enjoyed cordial diplomatic and economic relations for some time now. A mock extension, so have we. Therefore, we're a presence known in... Uh, <clears throat> In the Brazilian market, it encompasses a sol solid brand recognition among many Brazilian consumers. Marketing your latest product to Brazil guarantee an interested consumer base with relatively few domestic options to choose from. In other words, solid investment for us. Argentina. It's an ambitious nation hoping to carve out its place separate from the economies of either the arrogant U.S. or the robber of the North, Brazil, in some ways. Their economic goals make us natural business partners. Our companies produce some of the finest products in the modern world, and thanks to our special economic status, we have less of an overburdening presence than most American manufacturers that can deliver comparable goods and the Chilean market. The economic situation that exists between Japan and Chile is such that the latter is such a guaranteed trading partner. We can capitalize on the leverage of our overseers and Tokyo possess over the South American nation and ensure a captive market for our latest top of the line pro products. Perhaps a Japanese delegation in Chile could quietly inform Santiago that if they wish to see the exports continue as usual, they'll need to place some orders for our product for their government offices. Or we can simply brute force our way into the civilian market or advance a little either way as long as we reach our sales quotas. And of course, Japan is there too. Japanese, uh, Chinese won't like that. The Japanese will like it. More product profitability. I might just sell the Chinese market this time. It's a little bit less pro uh, profitable, but the Republic of China gives more opinion of, and more government support. So I want to see if we can do it this time. This might be a mistake. Let's try that. So we have these two here. So we've got plenty of political power. This one's probably really going to do quality. Hire more skilled engineers. And uh, no more corruption, please. Um, oh, we can sell, decrease Japanese expat support too. But this one's going to do as well. So we want this one to come back quickly. So we'll do that one. Oh, we can do that one. We have 40 more political power. I want to lower support. Force overtime for engineers. 12 and a half. Not bad. Anything else we really want to do? I don't really lower any more Chinese support or anything like that. 5% is not bad. That's quite a bit. 10% mm. is not bad. Do that one too. That actually gives quite a boost to here. Republic of China. Not bad at all. Now we still have how many seats? N nine for Chong Kong, and Sony has 22. Not bad overall. Uh, now the comment says, will you potentially be doing the other two corporations in the future after the patch? Also, while is it necessary, you could theoretically screw the code a bit and make Shapiro win for the new market, to make it a new market, though it ain't necessary. I just want to say Tino will become a better place, which is impossible. So it says, will Marita finally become the chief executive? His reforms will finally, begin, will finally be put to work. Let's hope you have a successful story. Me too. Oh. Reform security. Drawing to plans. Well, who won? Oh, Borman won. Well, I guess we're not going to Germany. It, well, I could always mess it up later on. Eh, we'll see what happens with this one. Belarus and Central Council, so. I apologize for not that one, but some other time. Well, I'm going to play the Guangdong a whole bunch. Drawing the plans. Morito Akeo, chief executive of Guangdong, stared out over the Guangdong cityscape and contemplated the small shops and the streets and factories in the far distance. He turned around as his cabinet filed him for the meeting, Lee, his trusted friend and ally, Stanley Ho, the self assured trader, and Matsushita, leader of the faction of Guangdong's company, still willing to work with Morito. <clears throat> he invited them to sit down and bade them pre uh, prepare for a long discussion. They, knowing the stakes, sat down. After all, they were debating nothing less than the future of the Guangdong economy. Li Kaxing and Stanley Ho argued that the focus had to be on the stability of the Guangdong society that meant to them, giving the Chinese and Zhujin more opportunity to make their hard work mean something. They reminded Morita that there was no shortage of people that would work hard if they were rewarded for it. 
Matsushita, on the other hand, was clearly out of his element. Morita, noticing this, gave him some time to gather his thoughts with the agreement of the other two. He at last argued that while the economic stability was well and good in principle, Guangdong needed to compete against the juggernaut of Matsuquo and its state-owned corporations. And he said, I know that Sony's success is due to your exacting quality standards. Morita knew that this was an obvious attempt to throw the ball to him, however. He knew that Matsushita had a good point. Another thing Morita was aware of was that Lee was not going to budge on his argument no matter the circumstances. The choice was his in any case. And that was Stanley Ho. Um, don't get much corruption, but we'll try this once. Well, the triads of a well deserved reputation for criminality and brutality, Morita and Lee have pinned their hopes on bringing the underworld of Guangdong to heel with their <clears throat> uh, via their long time acquaintance with Stanley Ho, the Macanese smuggler, industrialist, and fixers with the tides to his own triads. <coughs> well, Stanley Ho woos the hearts and courts. Uh, the Czech puts Guangdong's Japanese elite in Macau. He squares off against his rival, the Japanese vulture capitalist Yoko Hideke, uh, in a world of shadows of Guangdong. Beneath the watch of Guangdong police, Stanley and Yokoi fight a merciless battle where, each, where lives are cheap, money is a king, and everything is a stake. It would help Stanley win and go legitimate. We could have a powerful ally in maintaining control over Guangdong. Stanley has such a proposal, an exclusive contract for gambling rights within his home territory of Macau. To begin a shining light of tourism in this sphere, but the Yakuza will surely not go quietly. Ah, here we go. Um, I was recommended to do this. So police control, uh, control is really low, but, you know, whatever. Less corruption would be nice. Ah, oh, I found the secret, though. So. I'll increase police everywhere else. Sergeant Kawasaki, stared to the pile of notes, whose characters had stopped being infused with synthetic meaning several minutes ago, rubbing his temples vigorously. Yeah, it would be crazy. Certainly wish he was, and that was likely a thing to believe in, in and of itself. <clears throat> but still, he did, of course. Uh... Um, because if he wasn't, he was faced with an unwanted reality, what must come after? At the very least, a camp by tower being dishonest with the police, under ordinary circumstances. And my wish might be willing to pass off knowing the shipments were from Manchukuo as a mere guess, or a slip of the tongue, but combined with the financial records, a strange tip off about the truck and everything else could not be let Kawasaki assume anything except the worst. And with the presence of the worst, action was followed. It was a huge risk, but someone would have to monitor a local camp by tower personnel for Yakuza connections. The watchers would become the watched. But what to catch him? The business would be conducted at the docks where the goods came in, so they had to send someone, but an actual agent or just a network of pat patsies. In order to find anything uh, darning, a close surveillance would be required an extremely risky venture. There would also be camp by offices, but there would be little chance of police, let alone ones disguised as civilians anywhere near anything they considered to be for their eyes only. But then again, a lot of people went in and out of those doors. It must have, uh, must have grown arrogant. What, what would be the downfall? Watch the docks. Oh, watch the docks. So it's not bad. It could be better, though. Uh, we none nothing being worked on right now. Oh. I don't want fifteen percent though. Japan, we're eight three, and as long as we're above eighty, I think that's pretty good overall. I don't want to lower China support anymore, but make sure we do well. <clears throat> Five percent corruption. Ten percent. So Five percent is not enough. Sacrifice? Nope. Oh man. I don't want these. These are very expensive. You don't get very much from it. Choshu? Actually, Choshu. Police presence in Choshu. Chokai? We already don't have a very good police presence here, anyways, and this is one we're just beating down relentlessly, so. You might as well do that one. Where is it? Right here? Yeah. It's fine. Can't buy that influence in Koshu. Well, we're already doing that one anyways. We might as oh, that's 3% corruption though. We don't want any more corruption. Trying to give them support. God dang it. I, I do I refuse to do corruption, so I'd rather lower Chinese government support. Momei. Ah, I'll do that one too. Screw it. And I'll take one as well. I don't do that one. I'm not gonna sacrifice it either. Five days, five percent. Oh, here's this one's back. That's good. The other one's not back though either, which just kind of suck. So we're still caution. Pervasive kimpatai tactics. The silicon years are not as bad. The radio promises. The sound of music resonated in the otherwise quiet room of Yamauchi Hiroshi, who was diligently sifting through the mounds of paperwork and handed, handling them with care. Whether it be fulfilling forms or writing up the rest of the long postcarded reports, Yamauchi studiously attended to his work to the tune of the wonderful music on Guangdong's airwaves that provided some distraction for the otherwise gloomy city. So the music stopped, so did he in his work, interrupted by a news break announcement. Yamauchi glanced at the radio as he put down his pen and lay back in his office chair, using the announcement as an opportunity to rest from the work. 
The voice of an evidently jaded but enthused reporter came on announcing the ascension of Morito Akeo to the post of ex chief executive. The announcement comes as a shock to Yamauchi and he listened with more attentiveness than before as the reporter read out a public statement issued by the new executive. The statement promised sweeping change to Guangdong through several reforms Morita's administration intended to enact. With the hopeful promise of turning Guangdong into a powerful home for both Japanese and Chinese, where one would be able to move forward through their own merits rather than their race. Yamauchi scoffed and took off his glasses. While well, was hopeful regarding Morita's promises, he found himself doubting the veracity of them, finding them to be somewhat naive and empty. Merits of a race, huh? Not like that'll find the city. <clears throat> he cleared a part of his desk and put his feet up, reclining in his chair as he stared at the small window just by his side, sunlight softly illuminating his desk. <coughs> he kind of played the integrity of Morita's character, wondering if the promises he made were just as fake as the knockoff radio show he made in the early years. Hmm. But what kind of person is he really, though? He felt deep down that Morita was sincere and his message resonated with the Amauchi, after all. He knows of the struggles Morita went through, and both men were afraid of losing it all, afraid of getting swallowed up by Guangdong as a carefully balanced attack robot of society. Lawson thought the music coming back started Yamauchi and signaled that he ought to get back to work. Guangdong was for one executive at a time. Um, yeah, I just I don't want more, any more corruption. Actually, how much is it going up by every month? Less than one percent. That's not bad. That's actually pretty decent. Less than one percent is pretty good. Especially considering where we were at. Yeah, that's an eighteen percent. Not bad. From security, not Stanley Ho. Uh, where are we at? It's not bad. Could be a little better though. It's only 19. Cut corners, probably not. I just don't want to cut any more support. 15% is really good though. <clears throat> Analysis of the Guangdong Police Force. <coughs> oh, this Awful corrupt in a nutshell. My guess is that one out of every four officers take bribes on the side, and the other three are paid for too far or little. But they would probably take one too. It's just that nobody's offering them one. The gear they're given reflects their funding too. Most of the weapons of their stations are ancient things, some dating back to pre World War One. I. I wouldn't be surprised to catch a breach load arrival sitting in one of the armories. The force has earned itself a bad reputation too, with the bribe and such. People view them as just another tool of the oppressors. We can fix that with just some more funding and a bit of time. Amori Khan, the new police commissioner, painted a grim picture, but not one that Morita wasn't prepared to handle. He expected this and called this meeting between the commissioner, Stanley Ho, and the Li Ka-Shing. As a response, do you have some ideas, Morita replied? <clears throat> the man nodded. I do. What happened to the nation most likely would not be tolerated in a Japanese city or even maybe a Chinese one, so we have to do a little bit of leeway, but I'd appreciate an explanation as to why he is here. The more he gestured towards ever silent Stanley Ho. His connections to some honorable gentlemen, and he serves well as a political ally. While I work on cleaning out the police force, Stanley will work on the people funding them from the underworld, Lee explained. Maruta could already sense some hidden tension between the commissioner and Stanley, but they would just have to make do. It wouldn't do to have the men at each other's throats before the operation was nothing but a plan. <clears throat> huh, a more glance at Maruta than at Lee. And the finding of the seat at Stanley Ho, well, very well, Mr. Ho. I look forward to our future partners. Shall we make shake on it? Politics makes strange bedfellows. Excise corruption, huh? Capitalism with human face. Uh, of stability. Well, we have 43 seats. We need seven. Stability first. Strengthen Chong's political position at the cost of potential GDP growth. We could try that. Well, Gong has long standing obligations to its shareholders and to the corporation to compromise of the inner circle of its government. The for due to the wholesale commitment to profits was ba laid bare. By the Yusuda crisis, both Morito Akeo and Li Ka Shing had questioned the status quo as the vanguard of a new line of thinking, of prioritizing the interests of the employees and now the residents of Guangdong at an equal level as those of the boardroom. Now they've occupied the heights of power in Guangdong, Li is keenly put the new theory of paternalistic capitalism in action, even though he's accepting slower growth in the name of social stability. Oh, that, that's good to do. Oh, this one's good to do as well. Yeah, that's fine. Just go into that one. We still have 57 days, which is actually really good. So, 57 days for the Chinese market and 59% and 81% product interest. So right now, we got to nine, over 90%. So we're looking for like 7.5% of more product interest, interest, and that's it. It's actually really good. A uh, long walk off of a short pier. Uh, the stars had already been drowned within the light of the city below them. They would have already shown up report shore. As things were, however, the only thing illuminating the inky black sea came from the occasional red and white blinking of maritime traffic moving to and away from the shore. Two men sat on the bench overlooking the waves silently like a pair of owls. Eventually one shifted and spoke to the other. The forecast is looking grim next week. <clears throat> only on the Monday afterwards, only light showers remained to the other. That was it. That was it, right? There are thereabouts at the first. He pulled a manila file out of his trench coat. Sure, Saturday after next, expect around 1,500 hours. HTV, uh, Rajin Sama, Manchu flags, location of the goods are in here. I trust you will continue to serve the country well. He handed the file over. 
Uh, take down River and make sure nobody squeals, right? Said the second man. What, do you want the whole city here? Hissed the first man. What do you care about the skin? Aren't you guys the cops? Don't compare us to those amateurs, said the first. I could have dis you disappeared for that. A few meters away, a man in the dark van bristled silent, slightly before opening a radio channel. Kawasaki, we have our men. Bag em and tag em. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Look at that. So much incredible product interest towards a Chinese. I'm going to like it that, too. Milling's not bad, either. You know, Empire Japan probably be better overall, but whatever. Let's try something different this time. I don't know what's, if it's better or worse to do with one group or over the other, but we prefer quality here. Oh, we can do that one too. Uh, yeah, we might as well. Oh, Shokan though. This time it's Shokan. Shokan. Um, yeah, that's pretty bad for the police as well. Even though I do want to get more police control, but we'll see. We're, we're, we're working on it. Even though I'm literally just... I'm destroying their, you know, ability to do well. Oh, we can do the uh, force overtime for engineers. Yes, please. <coughs> what if we could just max it out? An advertisement campaign, huh? Oh, there goes Dietzlin. Goodbye, Dietzlin. And now Stanley Ho. So with this. Oh, we have no political power now. Well, we might want to wait then. We'll slow down a little bit. Uh, capitalism with a human face. We are a bystander to a culture of unchecked corporate predation and exploitation, which treats its employees as disposable as a ballpoint pen or a scrap of paper. The social ills caused by this culture are starkly visible as its nets stretched out from the factory rooftops, a mesh of fibers and struts cutting into the sky. And for all this fault, Suzuki Taichi was not wrong in its assessment that the state of affairs would cause problems, Guangdong's capitalist model, and its current form generates far too much resentment to be sustainable, but where Suzuki saw the problem through the lens of ensuring a docile populace, we aim for something more. Let it be known that Chief Executive Morita Li Kaxing believed in capitalism with a human face. We believe in this not just because it is a more ethical way of doing business, but also because only through the power of the state can we compel our competition to do the right thing without rippling ourselves. The casino job. The executive floor of Sony headquarters have been cleared out for the night, with a handful of trusted security men pacing the hallway against interlopers. Most were little pals of Sonya Chung Kong, but a few were of the more motley sore, with the rag knife scars hewn into the sun blistered skin. Sally, we've known each other for, uh, for years, Marita asked half jokingly. The lights of poor Shory's theories visible behind him. Why the security? Won't get me too careful, Stanley Ho replied jocularly. Yokoi's men could be anywhere, and I need protection. The trads have been as a stalemate with Yokoi Haideki's Yakuza gangs for years. Whether it be smuggling, vice rings, you name it, Lee noted during the turn of the pages of a police report. Seriously, what's this about? Now the major Stanley Smirk playing with his grand psycho rich. I'm going legitimate. What? Uh, Lee glanced at Marita, dumbfounded. What do you mean? We're going to make a play in Macau. Stanley continued to swagger in his voice, gambling. And I don't mean roadside about Zhang or the horse races at Happy Valley. I mean real casinos, sucking in money from across the sphere, pure profit. And money laundering, Marita realized. Casinos aren't legal, Stanley. Yet, Stanley cut him. But if they were made legal with an official license, and if we could knock Yokoi down a peg beforehand, you can run the Yakuza out of town. The trials will forever be in your debt. Partner crime? A gamble to win the Macau last casino license has begun. Cool. Uh, we might need to do that one, we'll see. Not bad, so 42, that's not bad. Um, so where are we at now? 76% and 91, Jesus, that's really good. But quality is going to go by 12 and a half. So actually, we're going to be at like 89%. Wow. Koshu? Hmm. It's not bad at all, man. Because right now these guys are at 46%, these guys are at 35%, and these guys are at 77%. Not bad. The buck stops where? Uh, oh. <coughs> Still they're being kept in separate cells, asked the prosecutor. Of course, said Kawasaki. Neither of them have talked to us or each other. But you're convinced you have sufficient to know both of them, asked the prosecutor, especially the special prisoner. Bringing him in was going to bring a, bring a world herald on the force in the first place. I can't have that spread of courts unless you're absolutely sure. The evidence is irrefutable, said Kawasaki. We have it all right here. The man was working with criminals of flood of streets with smack. They can crap and moan all they like. He's going down. That may be the case, said the prosecutor, but who, who he is uh, could go a lot of different directions, of course. All I'm saying, it'll be a lot easier to book him as a rogue element and focus on his criminal buddies. He squeals a few names, the friends of another branch, send him where the sun don't shine, and the GPF can sell them a victory. If we make the, this a Yakuza trial, things, things will go much more smoothly. And if we don't, said Kawasaki, I'll do it, but we better be ready for heck to follow. The Yakuza are getting involved, huh? Um, I don't know, sure. 
Rogue element. Much more smoothly. I don't know what you want to do. Do it properly? That sounds like the thing we should do. We should probably do it properly. Probably. I could be wrong, though. If I, that's not wrong, I'm going to go back and not kill us off of that. So, 89%. We need uh, product quality now. Interest. You get 100% interest. Get freebies of the Chinese. 10% here. Support or money? Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't want to decrease support too much. We'll go that one then. Up here. How many more days do we have left? Nine days. Okay. That is extremely high. Can you get any higher than incredible? I don't know. We'll see. A hundred percent. Ninety-four percent. Look at that. Five days show. You can't delay it anymore. You only do it so five days. Eh, five days is a little bit too late. So we're out of political power now, but we actually did really well here. Hey, we're gonna get more audio and visual progress. Good. So advancements. Oh, if you want to read about this again, please go right ahead. Does anyone know where the play button is on this thing? So we got what? Increases initial minimum and maximum product interest. So does that do anything for us now? Probably not. Increases Sony uh, product profit profitability. No. Oh, which is nice. Still. 1926. On the hollows facing southwards towards the sea where faint specks uh, peaks of chrome of foam across the waves surfing towards the cliff faces of the tide prefecture. The Han River flowed to the ocean here and out in the South China Sea. Under the gaze of the three mountains, Lam Han Xion, Began his life here, born in the house that the clan had owned for perhaps a century or more. Westward is the sun bent low, casting long shadows out of the squat buildings in gray stone archways dating back to the Tong era. The wind chimes jingled softly against the midsummer breeze. It was the first memory Lam had. As mother cradled him in her lap, barely two years old, Lam's first words were Mama and Papa. The rope flowed out from the languid embrace of the parental love, warm and sometimes suffocating. Mother and child spun the silk spinner's wheel, round and round, watching the machine refine the rough raw silk into a thin, soft fabric. She guided his hands, running his little fingers over the smooth, finished cloth. The child giggled as his mother explained the history of their clan. It was a family business. The people of Chao Zhu and Shan Tu, hardly, hardly settlers from other provinces, made their living in the silk trade for centuries now. You are the children of those pioneers, she whispered to the child, and your blood flows the same resolute doggedness. Wherever you go, she stared at the eyes of a smiling child. Do not forget this. She spoke in the elegant, even dialect of Maizu Haka, trusting her child to go to understand what she could not say in Tiao Chu. Guess people we have been, then guess people we shall remain forever, forever. The placid, brindly air of Chada betrayed nothing of the fervor that gripped the prefecture. The first memory Lam had of the father was his silhouette against a crevice of the main door to the house and two faint senses. They're finally doing it, he said, looking into the eyes of his wife. We have to help somehow. The memory ended in the shadows of the three mountains rising against the stars. Had it really been that long? Yeah, let's see what we can do by this one now. An intolerable commute. <coughs> How often had Morita Akea made the four hours train ride from Hong Kong to Koshu, watching the Kowloon station clock tower pull away like burning itself in the product reports? Too often he thought, and now the reports were repla replaced with government documents for review, helped only by Li Kaxing sharing the bird. Luckily, the two finished earlier today as the train lumbered towards over the Sham Chun River, leaving the mountains of Hong Kong's hinterlands for the flat this flatlands of the Pearl River Delta. We looked over an unelectrified shanty town where children in rags jumped into a kaleidoscopic river slick with chemical runoff, not a kilometer away from the offending factory. More eerie were the abandoned villages amidst overgrown fields with rusting playgrounds, dilapidated shrines, and the glassless concrete. Nature soon reclaimed these spaces, empty to feed the hunger of the three pearls. In between the lonesome hamlets were occasional IJA or police Huininia uh, flags flying above isolated garrisons surrounded by barbed wire and central towers. A petitioner pleaded for his entry, his war way barred by an armored car and bayonets. The train mercifully sped onward before what came next. As the train entered Koshu, the elevated track could see the beggars they knew were below, showing instead the layered nets jutting out from the surrounding factories and offices, led only by the headlights of the recovery crews. They retrieved accidents in a harrowing dance, with only a flimsy harness to prevent them from becoming accidents in turn. It was an intolerable commute for both of them. A dismal landscape made bleaker of powerlessness in years past, but now something must be done. Cool. So they have absolute control, and they have more control than the Yakuza, that's still better than nothing, but still. Chance support, port, yeah, my bad. The TA-11 stereo amplifier. <clears throat> the booted transistors was not so much that they could be making everything, but everything worth doing essentially had been done once before, but that could be made smaller. Calculating machines could be shrunk from an entire floor's worth of space to a single room. Multiple records worth of songs could be fit into a magnetic tape. 
Now one can bring the technology of a recording studio into the home, and a wholly unobstructive package. It would be hard to call the massive knobs and dials in Sony's TA1120 amplifier user-friendly in any audio file. Those who were Sony's premier customers would immediately recognize the value of an amplifier small enough to fit on a dresser. Those who didn't recognize its intrinsic value would find aesthetic value in polished chrome finishing off the entire package and be metaphorically blown away by the amplified sounds of whatever the owner wanted to listen to hear, whether that be a song or a serendipitously recorded conversation. It was a statement to the owner's technical proficiency, wealth, and power in any way that only Guangdong made possible. Sony stands apart from the crowd. We average 97%. Goose says, John Kong seats by one, and Sony seats by two. A uh, natural spirit named the product's alcohol will be obtained with 2.54% real GDP growth, 6.11% GDP growth, 1.272 billion in miscellaneous growth. Because we have invested towards the Republic of China, we get a 7% more increase and more Chinese government support. Nice. Awesome. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Pretty good. Now we do want a little corruption here a little bit. So actually, 49% is looking a little better. Quarterly growth of the tribes influencing each affected region goes up by zero, uh, or at least for now has been stopped as much. Um, you know, we'll do that one too. Why not? 49%. Let's give it a day. Does this do anything here? No, that's actually really good. Not bad overall. Cut corners, regions of Guangdong. Not bad. So over here, we can't do too much. So they gave us 34 seats in total, which makes Queens we're the most powerful so for now. So we now have what? 44 seats. <coughs> oh, buying power is just not enough. Marie decide, letting the report he was reading back fall back on the table. The country is huge, but there's no money here. Even if we sell prices that just barely break even, practically nobody in China will be able to afford our products. Well, to market to the wealthier uh, coast of oligarchs, at least for now. In a purely monetary sense, yes, Lee replied, but we have other priorities that China can help us achieve. If we're seeking to help bring modernity to China, we'll gain forever the Chinese population back home. The occasional promotional campaign and giveaway, I think, will bust out tremendously in this regard. Our investors won't like it. They're already skeptical enough of China as a business proposition. We need to find some profits elsewhere. We can have both ch uh, strategies. China is poor, but growing quickly. We'll secure the area around the Yangtze Delta first. The investors will get their dividends and we'll get the points with the workers. Pragmatic benevolence. A mutual partnership. The reality is that the Guangdong's economy is buttressed by a vast array of small, medium, small to medium sized businesses, often run by Zhuzhen entrepreneurs alongside smaller Japanese subcontractors. Chung Kong is no different in the 50s, it's only that its alliance with a similar sized Sony and good fortune pro helped propel the two to promise by 1962. Lee aims to replicate Chung Kong's success by repl replicating its alliance with Sony in a multitude of industrial sectors, creating corporate alliances that allow sh resource sharing and amplifying negotiating power against the large Japanese conglomerates. While well, this arrangement of alliances will cause redundancies and inefficient distribution of capital in the economy, Li ups at this initiative with Chung Kong's financial help. It will open the door for more Zhujin and Chinese businessmen to find their fortunes. Nice. What do we have here? Helps out a little bit. Yearly surplus is not bad. 15% growth. Still not enough. Uh. It's a little ahead of time, but, you know, whatever. We could actually do this too. Oh, uh, happy October, everybody. Oh, I should have done this before it auto saved. But oh well. Oh well. Seventeen percent growth is even better. <laughs> cool. So now with that, what can we do? Uh, nothing here, just growing influence, right? Yeah, that's all it is. Uh, cut corners and research. Oh, look at this. Desperate measures, increases seats. Oh, we definitely need to do that one. Yep. Bribe with Jung Leko seat. Oh god, corruption. So how many days do we have? We have 45, we need five. Amendments, stability first, effects. Is Zhujin have a part to play in Guangdong's business environment? Um, passing the, will give us the following effects. Better industrial and industrial expertise and equipment stuff. Kind of become more decentralized. Due to the stability first amendment, we get the following bonuses. Every state will get a more increase there, and way more GDP growth. Increase Chung Kong's Leko seat taken from Matsushita. So you're telling me we need to do this. Um, I want to at least do this one first. We just want raw. We like it raw. 
And... A little more corruption. We'll work on lowering corruption later on. Um, we usually get those big bonuses to do so. Uh, we probably close out this one for now, because I do want to get rid of the, that influence, but whatever. Unfitter access to financial capital. If money is the lifeblood of the modern economy, then it stands reason that the only way to ensure that businesses thrive is to make sure they have the seed capital to get off the ground. For at least vision of the new Guangdong economy to succeed, we have to ensure that local businesses that have lent a hand to mouth existence today have the funds needed to begin expanding. And when the Japanese financial house sees Zhujian and Chinese businesses as too risky to lend to, emergently will step in through specialized government and financial institutions and calling on the leading lights of the Zhujian community to enter the financial industry. With some assurances, we can convince everyone, say the major Japanese banks, here that there's an opportunity here for everybody. Should not spend all the political power early, especially on getting more growth, but oh well, lesson learned. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check the motto scroll link in the description below. Oh, in the description below. Oh, NRA 24th Army. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also see what else we can do with this handsome Morita Akeo. And uh, make Guangdong richer, more wealthier, more prosperous than that evil empire of the north. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.